Hello, I'm Cinda Crawford. Today we're talking about chronic fatigue syndrome. It's a term that is well understood by those people who have the illness or know a bit about it, but it's misunderstood by a large portion of the rest of the world. To diagnose CFS, first determine what you do not have. That is the approach that the medical world suggests that you use. In other words, a diagnosis of exclusion. Excluding everything else. Now think about that as we go through this. The CFIDS Association of America on their website, www.cfids.org, has these words. Excluding other illnesses with similar symptoms and comparing a patient's symptoms with the 1994 International Case Definition. And folks, that case definition is still in existence today. It has not changed. Let's look at it. The criteria of the case definition calls for four of eight symptoms to be present along with a level of severe fatigue that interferes with physical, mental, social, and educational activities. Both the fatigue and the symptoms must have occurred for at least a six-month period. People with CFS may experience many more than the eight symptoms named in the case definition. So knowledgeable physicians will take this fact into consideration when making a diagnosis. And that's, of course, after looking at other possible reasons for these symptoms and ruling them out. According to the Annals of Internal Medicine, a case of chronic fatigue syndrome is defined by the presence of the following. Number one, clinically evaluated, unexplained, persistent, or relapsing chronic fatigue that is of new or definite onset, is not the result of ongoing exertion, is not substantially alleviated by rest, and results in substantial reduction in previous levels of occupational, educational, social, or personal activities. Number two, the concurrence the concurrent occurrence of four or more of the following symptoms all of which must have persisted or recurred during six or more consecutive months of illness and must not have predated the fatigue. Now think of this word continuous concurrence. Self-reported impairment in short-term memory or concentration severe enough to cause substantial reduction in those same previous levels of activities of your life. People with chronic fatigue call this brain fog. And then you've got sore throat. Many, many people with chronic fatigue get multiple sore throats. Others may experience tender cervical or axillary lymph nodes. Sometimes you can feel those on the outside of the skin. They can hurt and throb. They can be painful. But then there is generalized muscle pain and multi-joint pain, but without any joint swelling or redness that you would associate with an arthritic illness. This type of muscle pain can come and go it can move around, it can be mild, it can be extremely severe and incapacitating. Other people experience headaches of a new type, pattern, or severity. These can go from mildly nuisance headaches to totally incapacitating headaches. Other people experience unrefreshing sleep. This is a very common symptom. Some people feel they get way too much sleep and can't stay awake enough during the day. They're just too exhausted to stay awake. 
other people cannot get enough sleep, so they just feel totally tired all the time. And then there's the bone tired exhaustion that comes after you do anything. The term for that is post-exertional malaise, and it often shows up after 24 hours. Or it can last for another 24 hours, or a day, uh, or two, or three, or five, or ten, or months. It depends on the person how much their body can take, and it can be from a physical event, but it can also be caused from any type of stress, including mental or emotional stress. So why this diagnosis of exclusion? Well, it's the only thing that we have to diagnose chronic fatigue syndrome that may be a reason for some of the doubting Thomases that do not think it is a real illness because there's no test no lab, no x-ray. That doesn't mean people don't hurt. That doesn't mean it's not a real illness. Doctors don't have a clear-cut test for of any kind to definitely say someone has CFS. They must look at your symptoms and then make sure that you don't have anything that is treatable. I mean, think of this. The diagnosis of exclusion, they need to look at all of your symptoms, every bit of it, fainting, dizziness, pain, hormones, panic attacks, everything. There can be many causes for these things and they need to be excluded as a sole cause of what is wrong. So this diagnosis of exclusion it's important since there are no tests, no x-rays. You need to make sure that you do not have some other illness problem that is treatable. You don't want to ignore cancer or multiple sclerosis or Lyme disease, any autoimmune illness, certainly not lupus. These are important illnesses in their own rights. Sometimes they are the diagnosis that you end up with. Sometimes they are secondary diagnosis and also accompany chronic fatigue syndrome. Well, thank you so much for letting me take you down this little journey of learning what chronic fatigue syndrome is as a diagnosis of exclusion. I encourage you to come to getwellhealth.com forward slash CFS hyphen info. There's lots more information at Get Well Health. And please join me at the Health Matters Show anytime on the blog and the Friday podcast. We have a good time. We have a great amount of information that we pass back and forth and share. I have some great guests and just a really good source of information. I'm Cinder Crawford, your host. Thanks so much.